Well, got some news going on tonight. Found out that CRST is going to be closing their student driving school. And they said they had 12,000 successful drivers. 2% have only stayed. Well, I got a little bit of flip-flop with that. I think they've been through more than 12,000 drivers uh, since they started this school in 10 years. 2% might be what has stayed for to do their contract. But how many of them has dropped out, quit, went to other companies, and owed on their contract? That would be the number I'd need to know. Said they're going to go into a different way, something about focusing. There's the clip there. Uh, you can find this information online. There's nothing special. But, I was at CRST years ago. I got my CDL to a third party school, which my contract was hooked to CRST. Could have been CR England and Epps, and maybe one more CR England, Epps, CRST. Might have even been a Warner. Uh, TMC. Uh, so all of those were affiliated with the school that I went to in Lexington, South Carolina. And, and I've told this story before here. Uh, went to school. Finally went to work with a trainer. Uh, they paid me maybe $350 a week while I was in training or something like that. It wasn't a whole heck of a lot. Then we got on the truck with uh, my partner and I, and one check I would bring home after taxes, $48, $68. The next one it would be $119 or $169, depending on the miles that we traveled. Uh, that's how long ago it, it was. It might have been 11 or 12 cents split. So it's like five cents a mile. Uh, so I found out, my wife found out one of her friends, his brother, went through driving school and he was telling what he was making at another trucking company. So I left and went over there. Long different story of explained this. Somewhere is a video in here about that. Years went on by. They called and asked me about becoming an owner operator. Uh, trainer gave me a big salary, what they'd be paying. Uh, of course, I had some tickets and stuff. Um, went up there, went through orientation, stayed around for the trainer orientation. They called me in the office, told me I couldn't train till one of them tickets I had on three or four months. So that's fine, I'll run. Give me a rent a car, had to go from Cedar Rapids, Iowa to the other side of Chicago. Picked a truck up, had a rat's nest in it. I've showed pictures and stuff over the years uh, about all that mess. Um, I just, they wouldn't book loads, they couldn't find freight. Oh, all we have is team freight. Then me and the dispatcher got in. He said, well, you not, you ain't been here long enough. If the wheels ain't rolling on the truck and you're not making money, I don't need to be here. That's basically what I told him in that big conversation. Well, you know, it's hard to find freight. I don't even want to go through that. He's millions of trucks on the road. And he's talking about, oh, it's hard for them to find freight. Please, please. All they want to do is hang you out and starve you to death and then think you're obligated to work with them. 
they should have reimbursed me a few thousand dollars. Probably about $30,000 worth of headache I went through with buttholes. But anyway, went through that. I had to stay at the same dormitory or old motel behind the office there, dispatch office. Um, and it had like three bunks to a room, three floors, I think, two or three floors. Got what it was, a little small. Like, but anyway, uh, went through all that orientation stuff with them. And I had a lot of people ask me about what should I do? The number one thing I told them is stay out of this drama that y'all talking about this girl and that girl can't drive or this guy and that guy can't drive. Stay out of all of that drama. Concentrate on yourself. Get your CDL. Get your butt on the road. That's all you need to do. Don't worry about anybody else or what anybody else is doing. Worry about what you got to do to get your butt in that truck. And a lot of people thought I was snobby for saying that. I mean, when you're up there, my nose is itching. When you're up there and stuff like that goes on, I mean, that that is what you're there for. Uh, they did feed you lunch and uh, breakfast uh, every morning. Um, I think you only you only had to worry about supper, but man, it was like high school drunk. Had to be in bed at a certain time. Of course, I know some of them people come in and out. I know they have to keep some kind of rules, but uh, just the quality of people that went through the quantity of people that went through there. I think if they would have had a different approach, they probably would have been more successful. But I think they was worried more about the money than they were about the retention at the time. Now they worried about the retention of the driver and they're trying to cover up. Well, that's my final thought of CRST. Uh, so, leave me comment. Whatever. You know, we'll chit chat later. And like, share, and subscribe. If we ever get that big number, we can go live and talk about a lot of these events. And I can talk to you one-on-one -on -one through uh, some of this chat and stuff. So, all right. Stick around. Let's see what happens next. I got part two coming up to the part one trips already posted. Uh, so, that should be out in a day or so. Everybody have a great night. Be safe.